Hello there, welcome, happy Friday everyone. Welcome to our Friday feature. It is first Friday of May, May 3rd, and we are excited to invite and welcome everyone to our Friday feature with Kelly Isdahar today. Welcome, I'm very excited, uh, but before we get started, I would like to let everybody know, out there know who doesn't already know about BMG Fly that we are a nonprofit organization founded back in 2018 with the purpose of uplifting and empowering Black Muslim uh, women and girls. And that's what we do at the Friday feature. We spotlight Black Muslim women and girls and we talk about what their professional um, expertise is, what their passions are, what they create, what they're working on. And this week we are talking with Kelly Isdahar, who is a visual artist. Um, she's a painter and she's also a writer, but she's very multi-talented. I've seen her art and it's phenomenal. And if you are not familiar with Kelly, get familiar, follow her here on Instagram, and I'm just waiting for her to hop on our live. There she is. Hey, welcome. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work the first time, you know, technology these days. All right, there you are. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, alhamdulillah. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. Thanks a lot. So Thank funny. you for having me. You know what? I didn't even plan this. We both have bookshelves behind us. Look at that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I was looking around. I'm like, okay, I don't know. This is my first time actually doing like an Instagram live. So I'm like, okay, do I, what, what do I do? What do I put up? How do I set this up? And I'm like, okay, bookshelf. Okay, great. We got it. <laughs> Perfect, perfect. You know, because I was just talking about how you're not just an artist, you're also a writer. But before we even jump into our conversation, I would love for you to introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you're doing now. Okay, well, my name is uh, Kelly Isdahar Crosby. Well, Isdahar is uh, the, the name that I chose when I converted, even though I don't really um, use it that much. Oh, something happened. All right, we lost her. Let me see. Huh. Am I frozen? That's weird. Okay, let's try this. Um, I've invited her back in. Hopefully, she'll be able to join. Oh, there you are. Hey. All right. Okay. There we go. Yeah. I'm not sure what happened. Okay. No, sorry about that. <laughs> you were okay. saying that you chose the name is Okay. Yeah. I chose the name uh, is a long time ago. Um, it actually means flourishing in Arabic because that's the kind of, you know, path I wanted to take as a Muslim and the path that I wanted to take as an artist and as a human being. So that's kind of, you know, a, a name that I've kind of, you know, just kept with me, even though most people call me Kelly. Uh, I'm I'm an artist. I've been an artist uh, for as long as I can remember. That's been a part of my journey as a human being. But I guess officially starting it as a business, I'd probably say maybe the uh, late 2000s, you know, really getting into my art business after college. And I got into um, freelance writing as a um, assistant editor and as a contributing writer for Aziza magazine. And of course, yes, yes. If we all remember, you know, um, Aziza magazine, you know, the wonderful magazine established by Tiba Taylor and all of the wonderful features that she did about Muslim women for Muslim women in America and Canada. And it was such a great, um, it was such a great experience being part of that team. And I've been able to continue that freelance writing experience with different um, outlets, but mostly with um, Halal Consumer Magazine. Cool, and where are you now? Where did you grow up and where are you now? Okay, uh, I grew up born and raised in New Orleans and actually I'm currently in Atlanta. 
I've been off and on in Atlanta since 2005, so I'm, a, so I'm actually a Hurricane Katrina evacuee. So that's how I ended up in Atlanta. <laughs> I see. Well, you know, yeah. that, was some, that was interesting. And did that mm. have an impact on your art and your work? It, I mean, it did in the sense that, I mean, I had planned on moving to Atlanta after, you know, I had wanted to move to Atlanta after I finished my master's degree, but uh, a lot put me out here much sooner. <laughs> you know, a few years, you know, a few years before I ended up finishing my master's degree. But I think one of the ways that it impacted me is just um, being able to be in a larger Muslim community and just a larger community in general in terms of um, even though New Orleans is predominantly African-American, um, economically, there's not too much um, um, diversity, whereas in Atlanta, you see black people across all economic um, statuses. And so that was really um you know, kind of a, a culture shock for me. That was, but it was, a, it was a good culture shock. It was, you know, really good to see, you know, wealthy African Americans and also, you know, thriving middle class and working class African Americans, you know, really making a name for themselves here in Atlanta. So it really kind of lives up to that name of the Black Mecca. So yeah. that was good for my experiences as an artist and, you know, just as a Black woman. <laughs> Right. I remember when we talked on the phone before this, um, you had mentioned that you had become Muslim in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And so like you had been well when Hurricane Katrina hit. Mm -hmm. But um, once you got to Atlanta, were you able to find a more thriving community to become a part of? Because I, I remember when I went to Spelman back in 1991, <laughs> showing my age, <laughs> um, there was such a nice like little enclave of Muslim communities that you could choose from, um, mm -hmm. small communities, but also the, the larger one, the Atlanta Masjid. But tell us a little bit about that. Like, how did you find your place with a community? I, I think that with the Atlanta community, because it's so, I mean, we, goodness, where can I even begin? Because the, the New Orleans Muslim community at that time in the early 2000s, it, it's um it was much more close knit mm -hmm. you know so definitely i mean definitely in comparison to the atlantic community it's not as large you know so you can um easily get to different mosques and everything so i think if you're looking for that smaller community vibe then you know that's a good thing but for me for someone coming out of college i was really looking for the big muslim community experience and atlanta ended up being perfect because you know not only is there a large african american muslim um well african american muslim community but there's a lot of um south um, east asians a lot of arabs a lot of muslims from you know other parts of the world and there's just a lot of ethnic and religious diversity practice within the atlanta community so i was able to kind of you know uh, go to different massage go to different community centers and just kind of find my way. And then thankfully, you know, alhamdulillah, there were a couple of sisters that ended up coming to Atlanta from New Orleans. So that made the transition easier too. So there were some, some other black Muslim girl fly that you connected with. Yes. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, when did you embrace your own individual black Muslim girl fly? Not just the organization, you know, okay. you yourself, your own flyness. Wow, that's a <laughs> that's that's a question for the ages. Goodness, uh, I think. Well, I, I would say that one of the the promises that I made to myself when I became Muslim was that I would live Islam as authentically as possible. You know, I did a lot of of reading and research before I converted. I think I must have studied Islam and read books about Islam for about four years until I actually decided to take my shahada because I just kept kind of going back and forth like, do I want to do this? Do I not want to do this? And, and you know, looking at the pros and cons of the decision and everything. And, and, then, and of course, also talking to other Muslims and asking them of some of the challenges that, you know, I may face and how there may be pressure to conform 
to a certain type of standard of what a Muslim is supposed to look like or how we're supposed to act or what we're supposed to eat and how we're supposed to live. And I was like, okay, let's make this promise from the very beginning that I'm going to live Islam authentically and make sure that it's always God centered, you know, that I don't have to compromise um, the, the um, I would say the halal and the beautiful aspects of my culture. Right. You know, I don't have to let go of those things that it's a part of me. And, you know, it's it's what it was. Well, it's what makes me who I am. And Allah doesn't want me to give up those things. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's part of the reason why our community, our, our global Uma is so beautiful, because, you know, it's, we have Islam and we have all this different variation of practice. And even though we have this unity of Islam. It looks, uh, it, it looks different in many ways, but there, there's still that unity. Yeah. And it's very, very unique to our community, you know, and that's something that should be celebrated instead of, you know, something that should be feared. And so I think right. that's what kind of, what kind of eased me into my, you know, black Muslim girl fly, just kind of <laughs> like just remembering who I am and letting go of the parts that I know that Allah probably would not like, keeping the parts that Allah does like, and moving forward from there. That's so cool, because that's really what it's all about, you know, embodying your own identity, making sure that you're staying true to yourself and to your creator. And literally, that's how I define BMG Fly. And, you know, over the course of time, you know, even though we started back in 2018, over the course of time, folks have gotten to know us as an organization and people like to ask, well, is it just for black people? And I, no, it's not because the B can stand for anything. Mm-hmm. It could stand for, you know, beautiful Muslim girl fly, or it could be yeah. you know, <laughs> bodacious, whatever you mm-hmm. want to replace the B with, you know, but of course, first and foremost, I am a black Muslim woman. And so initially the first time I experienced, you know, fully embodied embodying my identity the way that I believe that Allah wants me to be, I was in college and thinking about okay. like, you know, what you were saying, you know, being at Spelman was the first time, like I was away from my family. I'm from Baltimore. I was very young. Uh, I graduated high school at 16. So I was very um, young on my own. Well, a little and I, genius. <laughs> no, you know, but you know, it, it, you know, I started school early and as I'm <laughs> in Sister Clara Muhammad school, you know, they didn't say, well, you have to be a certain age, you can't start. So like, that right, was right, right. but mm-hmm. no, yeah, just like embracing the first time I'm on my own. And I'm Muslim because I choose to be Muslim, not because that's what my mom says I should be, right? And yeah, then yeah. Being at an HBCU, you know, it was just wonderful that everybody was black oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and then you know all the ca- college campuses are there spelman morehouse um atlanta clark atlanta you know morris brown all of them so yeah it was college and i just you know was like yeah i'm here it was still like different though because at, in baltimore black muslim people are like you know it's normal mm-hmm. but being mm-hmm. on the you see HBCU campus, I didn't like meet a lot of black Muslim people. It was strange. It was a lot of just black people. Okay. And the the way that I, you know, got to meet other Muslim people was going to the masjid for Juma. Okay. So did you get the opportunity to go to the Atlanta masjid a lot while you were um, a student here? I did. Okay. Yeah. That's how I made my Muslim friends. I still to this Mm -hmm. day have Muslim girlfriends that, Mm -hmm. you know, I met back in 1991, 1992. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and is that the masjid that you go to, the one that you attended? Yes, yeah, it, it's one of the um, masjids that I, tend to, that I um, go to because, I mean, it's, it's amazing how it's such a, such a, I don't even know what word to describe it, but it's so foundational to the Atlanta Muslim community and how Muslims from it, it doesn't matter what friends I have from different walks of life go there and they say wow I always have a good experience or the people are so nice here and everything is so friend like everyone is so friendly and the environment is friendly and so I know I can always go back there and have a positive experience right 
And then but yeah, you, but, oh, it's perfect coming from being displaced to finding this new home. Yeah. That I'm sure made a big difference, you know. And community mm -hmm. is so important. Like I'm sure that there were sisters in the community that you you sought out to like connect with, you know, just as I was like talking about the girlfriends I met. I mean, I was 17, but still, mm -hmm. you know, as an adult, you said that you wanted to find community. Did you find that? Like, you know, what, how do you describe the community involvement, you know, there at the masjid for sisters, you know? The sisters? Oh, the sisters are active. The, the sisters are definitely active. Now, I will say that um, currently it is a challenge for me because I live in a suburb outside of Atlanta, so I can't get to the masjid as much as I would like to because Atlanta is growing by leaps and bounds. And unfortunately, we're not like New York, but we've got the population of New York, I think. So we don't have the transit system. So you probably heard about our infamous traffic um, problems where it's hard to get from one side of town to the other. Okay. So, yeah, that's... I mean, God willing, we'll iron out those issues soon because it, it's it's really getting crazy. But but yeah, the the sisters are always doing um, really great uh, things here in the community. Whether if it's fashion shows, whether if it's programs for um, young women, for um, preteens, for children, whether if it's for what they call their mature youth. Um, just the other day, I saw that they were going to have like an Eid sneaker party. Uh, I, I don't know if they've had it already or if it's coming, but I saw an ad for it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And th there's always um, activity and events going on. So it's a very vibrant, active community. Yeah. And it seems like, like you were saying, it's growing by leaps and bounds. And mm -hmm. the fact that you mentioned all of those things when I said sisters lets us know who is the driving force in community. It's always yes. us, right? Yes, yes, but that's yes. It's interesting. yeah, yeah. It it really is, you know, because no matter I mean, no matter where I go, it's the sisters in the front, in the back, and on the sides. You know, organizing, putting things together, making the calls, doing the organizing. I mean, you can't miss us. We're, right. we're everywhere. And I didn't realize just how large the community had grown until I went to the last um, um, Eid prayer that we had um, held at the convention center. Yeah. And there were just so many people mm -hmm. that a, a lot of us, I don't even think we made it to the actual prayer room because there were just so many lines of people outside of it, just mm -hmm. trying to get inside. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, we're just, you know, just kind of busting at the seams at this point. So, like your name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing really yeah, yeah, I was just yeah. like, man. I, I mean, I don't know if it's pandemic or if it's just <laughs> like what is going on. But it's just like there's just so many. Um, I guess it's new Muslims, and then of course, you know, I like to see it for the Eid prayer. It's always like it's the Met Gala, and then there's also the new babies. I like to see all the you know little babies that. <laughs> Yes. You know, all the people in the community have had. So, yeah, but it's just growing and growing. And and I love to see it in comparison to when I first came in 2005. You know, it's it's remarkable the changes that we've seen down here. Almost 20 years for you. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 20 years. Yeah. I can't believe it. 20 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you got plenty of Black Muslim girl fly at that match, dude. Um, like you said, the Met Gala on Eid. <laughs> oh, my God. Goodness, yes. And then Atlanta. And, and one day, it, I mean, if they haven't done it yet, if it's not in the works already, there should be some kind of catalog or documentation of the Sealed Nectar fashion show oh. that's done here annually in Atlanta. Because yeah. I, I really do feel like that is a historical, very, like, that is Black American Muslim history right there. Yeah. I agree. I've read you know. articles about it. So, yeah. yeah. Now, do you often engage with, like, your art with these kinds of events? Mm -hmm. I saw your, um, in your was it TikTok? One of your pages, like, you had shared, mm -hmm. you did a live painting activity, and that was, like, yeah. with Iman, I think it was. Yeah, it was at the Iman offices, and it was actually through a um, a, a local group called Sisters United in Humanity. 
cool. And they're also affiliated with um, they're also affiliated with the Atlanta Masjid. So mm -hmm. again, a lot of these um, lots of organizations, and they also work with one another. So it's like if you know one, you know them all. So yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and so this is uh, this is a, a group of women, Alhamdulillah, um, predominantly African American women, but there's also women from other um, cultures as well. Mm -hmm that run um i know that there's one program they have called the untha program and that's about um helping you know preteen girls and you know talking to them about the different changes that take place in that period of life and kind of you know easing them into young womanhood and all that stuff uh they you know they uh trying to think i think they do um, f um fundraisers and that particular event was a pain sip well, it was, it was actually e-party paint and sip. Nice. So the sisters, you know, had a nice potluck and we got together and I had created some stencils of some Ramadan lanterns and like a little um, hijabi sister. Nice. Got our paints and paintbrushes out and we decided to get creative and it was a really fun time. <laughs> that sounds awesome. And mm -hmm. we had a sister on here who's also a painter, Zainab. I don't know if you got a chance to see her Friday feature, but she talked a lot about how um, you know, just engaging in her art helped her step into her own identity. Mm -hmm. So like to hear you talk about sharing that with the community, that just like reinforces one of the questions I was going to ask is like, how mm -hmm. would you show up with your own black Muslim girl fly in your local community? But you already answered it by just sharing <laughs> that experience. I love it. And that's so that's why it's so important, you know, growing up in the masjid, girls tend to get overlooked sometimes and mm. so i know i know i'm speaking from my own personal experience as an educator you know working in um muslim schools and just seeing how the girls just were they were like hungry mm. for that connection and that support without being judged and made to feel right. shame right. and so that's yeah. like literally what i try to like do but hearing you like bring your art not only did it bring them together, but it also allowed them to express themselves creatively, which I'm sure was such a great experience. Yeah, and it's just nice to kind of let go when it's just all sisters, we have our own space, and it's, you know, a judgment-free zone, so we're free to be goofy, we can yeah. sing, we can dance, <laughs> we can eat and paint, and, you know, there, there there's no judgment. And and what I like about this community is that there is that special focus on making sure that there is age-specific and gender-specific programming for different groups because, you know, it is easy to, you know, think, oh, well, we only need certain programs for, uh, well, how could I put it? Some groups, you know, tend to be overlooked. And unfortunately it is, you know, it's women, yeah. you know, girls and women, yeah. you know, or depending on what kind of um, masjid community it is, it may be, well, okay, the women are cooking and, <laughs> right. you, you know, right. And it's like, okay, well, you know, what about the intellectual appetite that's being, like, is that being nourished? What about the spiritual aspects what about the creative aspects it's like we're yeah. you know you know so it's like we're not just here to do the quote unquote um the stereotypically feminine things of right. you know what is expected of us as women but probably you know sometimes you know so come on right he, he washed his right clothes. Come on, he he mended his own clothes. Come on, y'all. Yeah, yeah, program, right? it, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and so it it takes you know I, I like that the programs here and that the community here takes a much more holistic view of the Muslim. You know, not simply okay, you're a boy or you're a man and you should do this, this, and this. You're a girl, you're a woman, and you should do that, that, and that. And then just kind of pigeonhole you and not even think about well, maybe you want to learn archery because that's the sunnah and maybe we should have archery classes for boys and girls, there you know? Go. You know, and I know that you are very big on community engagement. Like we talked about that on the phone. So like what, what kinds of things do you want to see more, like more from the community? Aside from that, because like I love that idea of archery. Mm -hmm. Goodness. Uh, wow, that's a tough one because they are, I mean, they, they are doing a pretty good job uh as far as for what i would like to see more of uh goodness i i think i think i would like to see the model of what the atlanta mesh 
Street is doing and what similar masjids and organizations like that are doing to other mosques and other um, community organizations. And also the establishment of more third spaces. Mm, yeah. They, they, they are coming up. I am starting to see more Muslims creating kind of a third space where it's not it's not the office and it's not the masjid, but it's kind of a community type of center or place where people can talk about things where they may not feel comfortable talking about it at the masjid, mm-hmm. which is you know completely understandable. And you know, I I, I want to see more of that. We're getting there. But I, I think we need to, you know, continue that trajectory. And, you know, and another aspect I would say is mental health. Again, we're a lot better off than we were before. We have a mental health association here in Atlanta. We have a directory of Muslim therapists and psychologists that they've put together. You know, so, you know, light years ahead of where we were before. So I think we just need to keep on that um, onward trajectory of, okay, we have the mosques, we have the places where we want to pray. Mm-hmm. So now we need to think of community. How do we reach out into the community? How can we be of more service to the community, not just for us, but to also our neighbors and exactly. the, yeah, the larger mainstream society? Mm-hmm. It's our responsibility. You know, that's mm-hmm. something that's incumbent upon us as Muslims. And a lot of people don't know that. Like your average person that you talk to, they may have certain ideas of what it means to be a Muslim, Mm -hmm. what it means to be a Muslim woman. And they don't realize that, you know, most of our responsibilities that are placed upon us have to do with dealing with our neighbors and, you know, Mm -hmm. dealing with our elders and taking care of our parents. You know, there's like this chat that's always going on on social media, especially on Twitter. Like that's interesting. (laughs) People are always like, I'm so glad I don't have to worry about my parents anymore. And then someone will will tweet something like, yeah, but I'm Muslim. So I'm glad I'm Muslim because I I take care of my parents. And it's like, (laughs) folks just don't understand. Like being Muslim is not, it's, it's, it's a village type of lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Right. And I think especially because we're in a good position to kind of bring that back Mm -hmm. the the aspect of the village because the village has been dismantled Mm -hmm. on purpose yes and and we have to bring it back you know because i you know if we bring back the village then a lot of our societal problems could be taken care of you know yeah it goes right back to you know the responsibilities that we have to each other you know people don't (laughs) understand muslims have rights over other muslims like you if you are Mm -hmm. sick i have the responsibility you have a right to be visited by me because that's what that's what a lot that's what god tells us we're supposed to do and and you know also um the incentive is when you go visit the sick you're also visiting with allah if you if you know the hadith it says that you know when you're seeking me these are the places you'll find me so it's like Mm -hmm. folks listen up this is yeah. what community is all about, you know. These are mm-hmm. the things that are important to a thriving, like you said, our society needs to thrive instead of just surviving, you know. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And how, like, like honestly, I wanted, I wanted to talk about how your art mm-hmm. helps you to bring about those things that you want to see happening, you know. Like, how can you do more events that will nurture those creative aspects, like? You know, what have you been going doing lately? Because I I know you've got things going on. Okay, well, what a few things coming down the pipe. A few uh, a few things. So I'll be participating in a community art market. Uh, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday coming up, and it's actually a market to raise funds for Palestinian artists and also for Palestinian families. Uh, seeking relief and also to help them, you know, get money to to um, evacuate Gaza. And so talking about community, this is going to be a, a combination of Palestinian artists and also artists of color like myself and, you know, allies. 
and us coming together to create um, art of resistance and art of you know community so that we can you know so that we can support you know our um, Palestinian brothers and sisters that are currently suffering yeah. and you know I'm I'm really um, well maybe I shouldn't say excited I mean well I'm excited about you know working you know with the artists that I'm going to meet there and then the on-site work that you know we're going to be doing and then also there's another um, opportunity that I can actually um, tell you about that's created by a group called Inspire Generosity awesome. so for um, any of the artists that are listening to this, any of the writers, photographers, designers that are listening to me talking right now, um, please go to inspiredgenerosity.org. It is a philanthropic um, organization and they have a call for creatives mm -hmm. and they are looking for stories and images of generosity. Awesome. And, and, and it, it talks about, uh, uh, it talks about Muslim philanthropy and how Muslim philanthropy really um, tells the story of Muslims in America. Yeah. Yeah. So the that's deadline for that is um, May 15th. So, it, you know, oh, that's coming up soon. Like we only have it's coming up now. soon. Yes, it is soon. But the great thing is that it doesn't have to be new work. So if you currently have something, especially visual artists, if you currently have something that's already done that speaks to the theme of generosity, you can go ahead and submit it. But yeah, we're looking for, you know, we're looking for creative people to, you know, show their work and just talk about what does generosity mean to them? That's so important. You know, just cultivating those types of conversations will make it so that more people are like more aware of things like that. And, you know, most of the time we are focused on our individual bubbles that we live in. And I feel like that's a result of this country. Like that's just yeah. American, American way, but that's definitely not the way that we as American Muslims uh, live. So gener inspiredgenerosity.org, mm -hmm. all the artists, writers, photographers, designers, just go mm -hmm. on and log on and check that out. And how are you involved? Are you submitting art as well? Are you um, representing mm -hmm. your organization? I'll be submitting art and inshallah, I'll be a part of the panel that will be nice. um, take well, a part of the forum, I should say, that will be taking place in September, inshallah. And we are we're, we're in the process of, of actually putting together some really awesome programming. So we haven't gotten it all together yet, but inshallah, that's another thing that's, you know, coming down the pipe. But as far as for other activities that I'd like to see in the community, it is something that is kind of a challenge for me because, you know, it's like being a, you know, being an artist and then working and then trying to balance, you know, life and just trying to find the time to, you know, do all the things that I want to do and pay the bills yep. <laughs> at the same life, time. Life work balance. That's important. <laughs> yeah. And it's always like this. You know? <laughs> one, is always out of, one is always out of order. Yeah. But I do want to definitely have more creative activities whether it's um the paint and sips whether if it's more of my art therapy related type of art activities where people can kind of relax and do um, art workshops that are a little bit more spiritually and psychologically um, focused on mental wellness you know, those are the things that I would like to, you know, bring to the community. And then, of course, I would love to do another um, large scale mural and have community involvement with that, because I, I think just public art can transform any yeah. space, you yeah. know. Not it, only brings people together, but it beautifies everything. Yeah, I mean, just just to be able to put something up that people are proud of and that represents their community and it, it and then it inspires other pieces of artwork right. and then people start thinking about revitalization of the neighborhood and it, it just transforms everything around it so yeah art, art is transformative <laughs> Absolutely. and i love the fact that you're an artist and a writer because it couples these two ways of storytelling because art is storytelling <laughs> as well and most recently have you been involved in writing? Um, I'm thinking about something that we talked about mm -hmm. with regard to the, the Palestinian movement, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, okay. But tell us a little bit more about what's coming up for you with your writing, not just your art. Okay. 
with my writing, I've as as of right now, I've mostly just been writing articles for Halal Consumer. Mm -hmm. I haven't done too much writing as far as for um, my activism, as far as for the Palestinian struggle or anything like that. I haven't found any opportunities in that regard just yet, even though if I do find one, I would like to, you know, take advantage of it because I will say that, you know, like art is my first love, but writing kind of came later, mm -hmm. you know, because because uh, I was so, like as a kid, I just loved to draw so much. Mm -hmm. And I was always like, okay, color and, and drawing. And, and, you know, I was so focused on that, that when I finally got to college and I started writing essays and my professor said, hey, you know, you should take a creative writing class. I think you might have something here. Oh, I was like, cool. oh, okay. So you think, think I, I might have, I might actually be good at this. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, so it, it's kind of a, a, I guess, something that I discovered late. So unfortunately, it, is, it sort of comes as an afterthought, and I need to stop thinking of it that way. No worries. It'll start, you know, whenever that need presents itself, you will answer the call. <laughs> Yeah, okay, inshallah, inshallah. But yeah, because the first, cause my my first urge is always paintbrush paint, mm -hmm. just always <laughs> straight to the canvas, always. <laughs> I mean, because that's like the it's like breathing to you, probably. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And with me, writing is like breathing, so it's like I feel you on that one. But it's it's something that you know, once you get into the practice of it you won't be able to stop because it's, it, it releases so many things, different ideas, different challenges that you might, you know, um, like face, but you, when you write it, it removes those obstacles, it removes barriers, it's so empowering. And so like, I really am looking forward to not just seeing more art from you, but I wanna see like a combination of the storytelling and the art, the writing and the art, because that's, that's powerful. That's powerful, I think. Yeah, uh, I what I really miss is blogging. I know that yeah. like blogging in the early, yeah, because I used to have a blog that I ran from about, I'd say maybe 2004 to about 2009, 2010. And that was when blogging was the really big thing. And we had an online community of Muslim bloggers. And, right. you know, we we're talking about all kinds of really interesting things. And yeah, it was actually called Izzy Mo's blog. And it was... Oh, oh. Um, maybe you need to revitalize that, you know, there's so many different cool platforms that you could take advantage of that will also spotlight your artwork along with the writing. So maybe yeah. check that yeah, out. I thought about so it. Pictures who are writers that we, we did Friday features with, but also who are artists. So um, inshallah, I'm hoping to connect all of us who have done the okay. Friday features on, because one of the sisters said, this is what I asked, I said, what would you like to see from BMG Fly? Mm -hmm. And she said, more in person, you know, we want to connect. We want to definitely connect. And that's yes. literally why I created BMG Fly, just to have this sisterhood, this connection. So inshallah, okay. we are going to come together, all of us, the writers, the painters, the filmmakers, the athletes, inshallah, who are scheduled for next month. Okay. And, you know, all okay. the no, because like another sister was saying, we should have some younger people on and mm -hmm. have some elders. And I was like, oh, just wait. We have some teenage athletes and we have some artists who, um, yeah. So like, yeah, I'm looking forward yes. to like, what you guys can do when you come together. Like, we are so powerful. Like, we need to come together more often and make time for each other. Yeah, that that's exciting. Like having all of us. Us. I mean, either either in like one online space or yeah. God willing, like if we're like a conference or something, yeah. <laughs> we're all face to face. I would love uh, that. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing. Think of what you could do, like it's all the people that you could connect. Because like mm -hmm. I was saying, like Zainab is a painter, but then also mm -hmm. Malika is a writer and she's like, she's got this website and then we have photographers and like, oh, it's just so much. Yeah. And we have a fashion designer who schedules the next week. Like, you sisters, like, give me life every time I speak with y'all. <laughs> I just want to share <laughs> that with others. Like, that's why I brought you on here. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. I'm so glad. Alhamdulillah. 
I mean, well, the thing about my art is that I get my inspiration from Muslim women. So, I mean, really, all I have to do is just go on Facebook and I'm just scrolling through my feed. And it's like, OK, I know one sister who's a photographer, another one who's an artist, another one who's a engineer, another one who's a I know one sister who's a weight um, lifter. And I'm just like, yeah. OK, all right, here's my inspiration. I don't need to look anywhere else. And, <laughs> and that's where I get my ideas for my art. Yeah. <laughs> Now that you brought that up, now I have to say, um, you need to give me the info to that sister because Absolutely. another one of our guests is also a weightlifter. And what? humbly left. Thank you okay. guys in the, in the comments. So glad that you're here. I just okay. don't. I don't want you to think that we haven't forgotten about you. She says you. A girl's gone hard. Says you all are truly inspiring. I humbly oh, love. That's like the whole. Man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. No, but yeah, get that weightlifter so we can connect okay. those two. Because the sister that's scheduled to come on to talk about weightlifting, believe it or not, she's only 12. Yes. Okay. Okay, so it's a different eight. sister. Yes. Okay. Eight, and then she's my niece. So, of course, I'm super what? proud of her. But it's like, I'm so excited. You know, okay. I understand. Oh, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Yeah, no, the sister oh, that I, I know. Your sister, yes. Yeah, the, have her on the here sister. Too. Okay, that is. I mean, that's awesome. A twelve-year-old weightlifter. That is awesome. Yeah. The sister I know. Um, I believe she got her master's in engineering from Georgia Tech. Oh, wow. So yeah, we got, got ourselves like a genius slash athlete. See? All right. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna share her details with you. Mm -hmm. Look at this. So yeah, not only are you talented but you're also um, a pillar of your community. Like you're definitely needed in the community. Those girls that are attending the masjid definitely see you and are inspired, whether they come up to you and tell you or not. Oh. As one former girl in the masjid who used to see sisters and be like, oh, I want to dress like her, or, oh, she looks good, or I can't believe that she's a lawyer. Like, oh my God, then that means I could do whatever I imagine. So like, these are the kinds of conversations young girls are having like you're not privy to <laughs> okay yeah because you know what i, I kind of feel like when i first converted and i especially at the atlanta masjid because the sisters there know how to dress oh my goodness but when i first converted and i was trying to get my wardrobe together and i go to the masjid and i'm like oh my goodness i have no idea what i'm doing and these sisters are coming here and they make it look so easy yeah <laughs> Just like... but you, you got it worked out you learned you stepped into your own i love the way you wrap your hair like it's so easy. Every time I see like your feed, yeah, she says, Girls Gone Hard says, Yes, the auntie's definitely inspired us. You know, right. you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I mean, they would just walk in with the, like, they're color coordinated yeah. with the, the shoes and the purses. And I'm just sitting in the corner, like, Ugh, ugly duckling. <laughs> no, you figured it out. You worked it out. And then now, guess what? You are one of those aunties that comes stepping in looking good. And all right. the way the colors are popping, like, mm. all right, like, yeah, I need to wrap my scarf like that, bring it to, to the front, yeah. like the way she yeah, to the front, <laughs> like, yeah, and then like tuck this down, like right. put it yes. in a corner. <laughs> yes. that's no, that's what BMG Fly is all about, you know, owning your own, stepping into it, and just embracing who you are. And humbly led, that's I see that, like, it's. All over it, and I love your freckles, by the way. Oh, so. thank you, thank you. <laughs> I, I think they're gorgeous. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, it's it's. I mm, I have a love hate relationship with them. T today I'm okay oh. with them. I'm alright. <laughs> <laughs> you should love them. I love them. I have freckles too, but not as many. And so I honestly, I was like, I can't wait. I need more freckles. What? <laughs> You know what? They're cool now. But when I was coming up, oh dear, it was just like, oh, no one liked freckles. Now people are getting tattoo freckles. I'm just like, okay, this is too much. <laughs> you, you, you're genetic, so like you and listen. Everybody's yeah. trying to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way it is. We're we are the ones who are the trendsetters. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> And um, inshallah, you're going to have more um, coming. Um, tell us about your website where we can just follow and follow along of what's coming up with you. Okay, great. So my website is kellycrosbyart.com. And uh, one of the best places to follow me, I would say, is on Instagram. Again, kellycrosbyart. 
And mm -hmm. if you want to listen to my political rantings and my artistic, um, watch my artistic tutorials and whatnot, I'm also on TikTok uh, at Kelly is the heart. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I follow you there too. <laughs> okay, now, before we go, I'm going to ask you, um, and I was thinking that we should ask all of, of our guests from now on to, to tell us, give us one piece of advice that you would give to another young Muslim girl or woman out there, no matter what age, a piece of advice that you would you would give her that you wish somebody would have given you when you were younger. Hmm. I think I would say that um, it's okay if you make mistakes. You know, I, I was, um, maybe it was the perfectionist in me at the time. And I, and I guess I'm comparing it to how I was when I first converted and how I was so cautious about making mistakes and trying to be the best Muslim that I could be that I didn't give myself enough grace. Hmm. But I think, you know, especially for our, you know, for our young girls, they need to know that mistakes will be made you know they're they're in a process of learning and growing and that they should have some self-compassion and most importantly we should show compassion towards them you know to yes. you know to understand that these mistakes that they're making it's not the end of the world they're going to learn from it it will ultimately make them better people it doesn't make them bad muslims it doesn't make them bad girls it doesn't make them bad human beings so you stumble just okay that's all right sis just just get back up and try it again no problem <laughs> exactly i love it that's perfect that's perfect thank you so <laughs> much man i would have loved to hear that when i was younger as well <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us and talking to us about art. And um, everyone knows where to follow you at kellycrosbyart.com and kellycrosbyart on social media. <clears throat> and before we go, I'm going to remind people of the website that you said that folks should go to, inspiredgenerosity.org. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. mm -hmm. inspired right. generosity. Mm -hmm. And inshallah, we'll see you here on the interwebs. Inshallah, you'll get some more followers. And I'm looking forward to seeing more art. I'm going to be visiting your website. All right. Yeah, I'll be posting some new stuff to Instagram and TikTok very soon. Oh, excellent. All right. Alhamdulillah. OK, everybody, Alhamdulillah. thank you so much for joining us. And if you are a young Black Muslim girl or woman out there, I hope today was inspiring as much as it was to me because I enjoyed every moment of this conversation. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you so much, sister. Alhamdulillah. Bye. Thank you. Take care. OK. alaikum, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Next Friday. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.